What's up guys, I'm Cheyenne, that's all book girl. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have your best books of 2023 so far to share with you. Obviously this is tentative because we're only going into March. So these are just your favorite books that you have read so far in 2023. Um, I feel like this is a good way for you guys to get five star read recommendations from other people. And this might give you a little bit of like a push into the good juju for all of the books type of direction. Um, pick up some good reads that everybody is loving and find yourself a new favorite hopefully. First book is the New York Ruthless series by Sadie Kincaid. Never heard of this author, never heard of this series, but the person who recommended this said that it was amazing. Um, this is a Russian crime series and that's all I know. That's all I, I know. So I, I love a good Russian crime. I love like the mob boss, that type of feel. So I'm guessing this is similar to books like that, but they raved about this series. I'm definitely gonna check it out for myself and um, yeah. Sounds good. The next book you guys said, well, books you said is the Off Balance series by Lucia Franco. I could not agree more. This series is epic. It is wonderful. It is like personification of love and lust and all of the perfect things that come in age gap romances. 2AT and one of my favorite series of all time. This is a age gap coach athlete romance. Um, our heroine, she is a gymnast and she falls for her gymnastics coach. She is training to be in the Olympics and he is a former Olympian, has all the knowledge and the skill, but he's super hot and attractive and there is so much sexual chemistry between them. It's just so good, so good. If you have not already read this series, this is your sign to do it. And then you guys also said the Sinner series by Michelle Hurd. I could not agree more. I read this series last year. I read the first three, um, Taken by a Sinner, Owned by a Sinner, and Stolen by a Sinner. I loved them all. I highly, highly, highly recommend this. Um, the Sinner series follows a group of mafia bosses that are in the head of what they call a priesthood. So there's different regions around the world and they are all like each hero in each book runs a certain region and they all kind of like get together and know each other's business and have each other's backs and yada 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 well there's different tropes in all of them and the heroines that they meet that are interconnected into their mafia world and it's just so good um michelle heard writes angst really well she writes tension really well just i i really really love the series and the next book you guys said is before i let go by kennedy ryan this book is on my tbr it has been on my tbr since like december and i need to read it i need to read it. I have the audiobook and I'm planning on reading it. I know that this is Marriage in Trouble. Um, I Kennedy Ryan is just incredible at her craft. So I know that this book is going to tear me apart. And I feel like I have to be emotionally prepared for that, especially in Marriage in Trouble romances. Um, there's a certain level of angst and like emotion that is pulled out of you when you read a Marriage in Trouble romance. And I'm not always emotionally ready for that. So um, I, I'm going to prioritize it. I just don't know when, but I have heard amazing things. And also I've heard that Jacoby Diem in the audiobook is fabulous. So I'm definitely going to be reading it that way and can't wait to, um, experience the goodness that you guys are saying. Next book you said is Final Offer by Lauren Asher. I know this is the third book in, what is the series called? I don't know. The first one's the fine print. The second one's terms and conditions and then final offer. I'm not going to lie. I'm not really a Lauren Asher fan, but if you're saying that it's good, I know my friend Jess from Peace Love Books, she read it and she loved it. She just said it was so angsty and she couldn't put it down and it's her favorite of the series so far. So I guess check it out if you like the other two. I feel like you might like the third one. Um, it's definitely worth a shot. And then you also said Take Me With You. I've talked about this book and my plans to potentially read it. And I know this is a dark, dark, dark romance. Um, the hero in this one, I don't even know if we should call him a hero because he's probably like the most morally gray effed up person ever. Um, he is a serial stalker rapist something like that. So super dark, super dark. I know that the trivers are trivers. I know that the triggers are heavy. Um, my friend McKay from Oh Hits McKay, she specifically was like, this is probably one of the darkest books she's ever read. And, but it was like surprisingly good. Like the psychological aspect of it is one of those ones that you feel like you're convinced that they should be together in this like sick and twisted way. And that's super intriguing to me, but also super scary to me. So I don't know. And some of the triggers I feel like would definitely trigger me. 
I just don't know if I'm ready yet, but I want to be ready if that makes any sense. I don't know. All right, and the next book you guys said is A Daring Pursuit by Kate Bateman. I looked this one up because I was like, I do not know what this book is. This is a historical romance, enemies to lovers. That's all I know. Um, for all of you historical romance lovers, if you have not read it, read it. I'm sure it's good if somebody else is recommending it as their favorite book of 2023. Um, definitely want to check out. Also, you said Binding 13 and Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh. Chloe Walsh has been on my TBR too. Um, I haven't put her on any of my TBR videos. I think she's one of those authors that every time I see her books, I'm like, oh crap, I really want to read those and I should read them, but I'm so intimidated by the size of her books. They are so long, so long. And if I'm being completely honest, normally when I read a book that is massive, and it takes me a long time to get into it. And that's what I'm fearful of is not being caught off the gate, like not falling for event like right away. If I don't, if I'm not hooked in from the beginning, I'm probably gonna DNF it because it's too long. And chances are I'm like, I have other books I could be reading right now that are half the size of these books. And I think I would like just as much or more. Um, and I have been told that it's like, it's friends to lovers, which I don't love if I'm, I don't even know if I'm remembering this correctly. And it like goes back to like when they're kids and it stays a while in the past and I hate that even more. So I'm just very hesitant, but I'm also seeing people being like, this is the best book ever. Like this is the best series. Cause I think there's another one saving six or something that just came out. I don't know if they're all interconnected. I don't understand that part of it, but, um, everybody's been loving them. So I'm like really tempted to just do it and find out. But I also don't want to like let myself down and set myself up to DNF a book that I kind of like knew I might because of the setup. All right. And then you guys also said Powerless by Elsie Silver. I am not surprised by this one. Um, Powerless is a friends to lovers romance. Our hero, he actually rescues the heroine on her wedding day. She decides to flee and be a runaway bride. And they end up spending all this time together, random little road trips, random, um, here and there's from inside town. This is Elsie's Chestnut Spring series. This is the third one in that series. I'm getting them all confused now. And uh, everybody's loving this book. I love Elsie Silver. You guys know that. So definitely check this one out. The next one is Protective Lover by Brighton Walsh. I have never heard of this before this book or this author. And so the person who submitted this, they specifically said, I feel like this is one of the books that you would like, like a small town romance that they thought I would love. And I was immediately intrigued. So I'm like, I'm gonna go look up this book. Okay, this is Enemies to Lovers in a Small Town. And it's also forced proximity because there's some way that they know, I don't know if it's like brother's best friend or sister's best friend. I can't, I can't remember specifically. Um, but there's some type of connection between them where they end up having to live together. So there's forced proximity, but also like at the end of the blurb, it says that, you know, he's been keeping it a secret on how much he loves her for so long. And then he's like ready to tell her until he sees her with him. Shoot. So I'm thinking like, is this a love triangle? Is this a love triangle? Because I can get down with a love triangle in a small town if that's what it is. Oh, the book is called Protective Heart. I gooned that. I don't know, but your girl's real tempted and I'm about to download this on KU because this sounds real good. All right, the next book you guys said is Lola and the Millionaires by Katherine Moon. Um, I actually read this. This was part of our Smut Club, well, one of our Smut Club picks back in, I don't even know the month. This is an Omegaverse and it was my first personal one. I actually like thought it was really fun. Was it the best thing that I've ever read? No, but I can definitely see, and I've heard so many people loving on this series. So many people love Catherine Moon in general. So if you love Omegaverse and you love like the reverse harem type of feel too, I definitely recommend this as well. Um, super smutty, a good spicy time. And the next book you guys are loving is The Duke Gets Even by Joanna Shoup. This is a historical romance and I know, I'm pretty sure this is Enemies to Lovers as well. My friend Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life, she, before this book even came out, she was like, if you're going to like a historical romance, I think it's going to be this one. And she told me that before release day, what, like she got an arc of it and instantly told me that she thought I would like it. So I'm planning on reading this. I don't know when, and I'm hoping to maybe do like a historical romance reading blog. Hopefully I can do that, but I am looking forward to that. I've heard nothing but good things about this book. So you should check it out if you love historical romances, or if you're like me and don't read historical, but want to try something, maybe give this one a shot. 
The next book one of you guys said is Midnight City by Nyla Kay. And I just find that so interesting because I have, I actually bought, and I'm holding the paperback right now. I bought this paperback when I was at Shameless, the book con. And I love that someone is talking about her books because first off, like she writes very out of bounds. She writes things that are not your typical, that is not gonna be for everybody. She stretches limits as far as they can go. This is actually the first in a series, however, it's written in third person and that's why I have not read it yet. And it is massive. Like she writes really big books, but I have heard that like the angst and the tension in this one, like there's just this intensity between this couple that is like vibrant and you feel off the pages. Like I have heard nothing but good things. So I definitely think that if you enjoy like spice in your, if you can read, if you want to read books following the same couple, this is a series you should try. If you're comfortable reading in third person, but also if you like the billionaire aspect and Nyla Kay writes the best spice first off, like she in seek me by her. I was like on the floor from the spice. It was incredible. Um, but also like she writes angst really well and like a push and pull between a couple. And I'm only expecting that to be in this one because the other book that I read by her, I got that full fledged, like it was amazing. So I'm expecting it to be like that in this one. Um, maybe I will try this eventually, but the fact that someone else recommended it, I love that. And I want to see more people reading her books. The next one, and I am going to like, I, I will praise this book forever because I could not agree more. I probably had like 20 people say this book too in my responses. Um, the Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. Heck yes. This book was absolute perfection. This was like romance personified like immaculately. I don't even know how to best describe this romance because it was so slow and steady. And like one of the quotes in the book is the quietest of love is like, what's the loudest. And our hero in this book, he really has this quiet type of love for the heroine. Like he doesn't go all out. He doesn't like make these big loud gestures, but like the small and intimate things that he does. And you like, you just swoon over those things. And you're like, it just shows you that like less is more and like quality is better than quantity. And like just little things that can be incorporated into a relationship that show that you're attentive and that you're being intentional about your other person, like about your partner. And Ryan Shea is absolute perfection. So he has this quiet love for the heroine Indy and it is so beautiful, so beautiful. I was just swooning the entire time. Like I remember even being in Di at Disney and I was finishing it up and be like, Sam, this part, he's braiding her hair. He's braiding her hair. Like just things like that. And you're like, oh my God, you are perfection. You are perfection. So this book, I could not agree more. I'm so excited for All Caught Up. I think that's what it's called to be the next one that's released in June because that is a baseball romance. Holler, baseball romance, y'all, baseball romance. So really excited for that one. Definitely read The Right Move if you have not read it already. Then coming in hot is Hawk by Jesse Hall. I have been talking about this book all month. You guys know how much I love this. It's probably gonna be in the top 10 of the year for me. Um, this book was absolute perfection. I love it. A forbidden, um, boyfriend's friend who is out of prison, fresh out of prison. He's living with them. There's cheating. There's all of the messiness that comes with that. And it was absolute perfection. I could not recommend this enough. And I fully agree that it deserves to be on this list. And then we have Broken Bonds by Jay Bree, probably this whole series. Um, I feel like if you're one of those people that read the first book and you love it, the entire series pulls through and it's like this obsession that you can't stop. I have read this series, did not love of it. I thought the first book was like the best out of the two and a half that I read. But my friend Jess from Honest Fiction, she loves this series. And I think that um, it's very addicting. It's a reverse harem, but it's a slow burn reverse harem. She really does form these like strange relationships with these guys, but also like there's so much potential in what each one has to offer her that it just makes it very intriguing. So definitely think you should check this out, especially if you love like a little more lighter on the fantasy side, um, plus reverse harem and like angsty tension between a bunch of men. I think this book would be for you. Well, this series would be for you. Then we have Mr. Romance by Lisa Raven. I love to see people talking about this book. 
This is one of my all time favorite books and I feel like it's so underrated. I, I talk about it every chance I get because it is amazing. Um, our heroine in this, she is a journalist and she's trying to find this like breaking story. So she looks into researching Mr. Romance and Mr. Romance is our hero, Max. Um, Max's job is to romance women into like giving them all of their romantic fantasies. And when our heroine Eden, when she goes to interview him, she is not convinced. She does not believe in love. She knows she will never fall in love. She doesn't want anything to do with it. And Max is like, give me three dates to convince you that what I do works and you might fall in love with me in the meantime. But it's Hero Falls First because he falls head over heels for her and it is beautiful. I just love this book so much. So I 1000% agree. This is such a good read. If you have not read it or if you're planning on reading it, please prioritize it because it is worth the hype. And the last book that a lot of you said is The Optimist's Guide to Heartbreak by Jennifer Hartman. Um, I have had a lot of friends who have read this book and loved it. I know this is like the first one in the duet. It's just the Heartbreak duet or something. I don't know. I might have just made that up. Um, Jennifer Hartman's books are emotionally damaging. They are gripping. They are beautiful. And I am fully expecting that in this one. I'm going to be completely honest. I have no idea what this book is about. And I even read the blurb and I'm like, what did I just read? What was that supposed to tell me what this was about? Because it did not feel like that. Um, but my friend Jess from Peace Love Books, she said that this was so angsty. And I know Caitlin from The Love Librarian, she loved this series as well. So I, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. I just don't even know what lead to go off of because I have zero idea of what this book is about. But the fact that you guys are reading it and loving it, and I think just because it's a Jennifer Hartman book, you just can go into it blind and expect nothing but the best. And that seems to be what's been delivered by it. So I'm excited to check it out and make sure you add it to your TV as well. All right, guys, so that is all I have for your favorite books of 2023. So far, I had so many duplicates on a lot of these, especially like powerless, the right move, all of the ones that you have been hearing about all over TikTok and Instagram and booktube as well. Um, people are just really loving a lot of these new releases and rightfully so they have been amazing. But I love hearing a lot of like new ones and ones from like smaller indie authors that aren't talked about that much. So hopefully this gives you a chance to check out some new books, add some new books to your TBR, hopefully find some new favorites. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for um, being here and listening to me ramble, drop in the comments below and give me a like 100 sign if you've made it this far in the video. Give me a 100 like emoji, whatever you call it. I don't even know what to call it, guys. I don't even know what to call it. Um, drop that in the comments and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye guys. That made no sense. I told you to comment twice. Just don't forget to like and comment. Leave a 100 sign. Thank you for being here. You're the best. Love you.